Howdy, I'm Tim Hartman with the Texas A&M AgriLife Extension Service, Department of Horticultural Sciences, and today we are talking what's going on with winter pruning. Before we get started, let's talk a little bit about the tools we use for pruning, uh, some of the objectives here, and, uh, and, and what we're doing. Okay, so I want to talk about the tools first. Okay, so for large cuts, we're going to use a pruning saw. This is uh, just a Corona printing saw. It's going to cut on both the pull and the push. It's recurved, very, uh, very coarse toothed, so it cuts very quickly and very sharp, so you have to be careful. Uh, so for this, we'd, we'd, be, uh, we'd be using this for larger limbs, okay? The next size would be our, uh, our longer, these are about two 24 inch bypass pruners, and so these would be used for for cutting uh, limbs that are that are not quite as large, something uh, about like this, uh, something that's a little small for a saw, but uh, for hand pruners, it's it's a little bit large. We can also reach a little higher with this as well. Okay, and then of course I've got my hand bypass pruners. These happen to be Felcos, um, and these are going to be used for generally for cutting uh, branches that are up to about one inch in diameter. The last thing I have is a can of Lysol. Uh, we do have the potential when we're pruning to transmit diseases. Uh, canker, for example, can be transmitted from, uh, from, from one tree to another. So at least in between trees, it's always good if possible to disinfect our pruning equipment. So I like Lysol, it does a great job, and uh, it's of course very handy and widely available. So we're just gonna go and just make sure we get a good coating of that. Uh, on our blades, okay? It also doesn't tend to, to uh, cause as much corrosion as Clorox does. Okay, let's talk a little bit about the types of pruning cuts. There are two major types of pruning cuts, okay? The first one we're gonna talk about is heading back, okay? So we have a shoot, this is one-year-old wood, one-year-old shoot, and if we cut it back in half or just, just you know, remove part of the length what's gonna happen, is that is gonna cause, now that I've removed the tip of this, instead of this main bud continuing to grow, what's gonna happen now is all these other buds are gonna be released from uh, apical dominance. And so basically you're gonna cause uh, more bushy growth. This tends to be more of an invigorating cut and it tends to make things thicker. And so instead of uh, just having this shoot growing, continuing to grow, now you're gonna have multiple shoots, okay? So that would be an example of a heading back cut, okay? Often when we prune fruit trees, really what we're trying to do is make more thinning out cuts. So an example of a thinning out cut, you can see where I cut this, if we'll come a little closer, where I cut this one-year-old one -year -old fruiting shoot off, uh, cut it part ways, and see how I've headed it back, and we've got buds that are gonna break. Uh, another thing I could do is I could remove it right at its origin, okay? I've eliminated that cane, that shoot uh, completely, and so what I'm doing is the more of these shoots I, I remove, the more I'm gonna thin out that canopy, okay? So we're gonna really, when we prune fruit trees, do more th uh, thinning out cuts typically than heading out cuts. So those are our two basic types of cuts. All right, so let's talk about the primary objectives of pruning, all right? so. What we're trying to do is we're first trying to establish a good framework. We want a good strong tree that can, can, uh, can harvest sunlight, that can, can support lots of fruit and produce maximum quality fruit. So here we're looking at a peach tree. Again, you'll notice that it's, it's open, okay? Uh, some people describe this as being an open center tree, being kind of like a martini glass. We have a short stem or trunk and then we have are three to four scaffold limbs coming out and growing out at about a 45 degree angle. So what that allows to happen is for light to come in, light to get all throughout uh, this canopy. So we get fruit production throughout the canopy. Realize that the only place that we're gonna get uh, flower buds and fruit is where we have lots of sunlight. So if we have a canopy that is too thick, what's gonna happen is we'll have shading toward the middle and toward the bottom uh, where, where these, uh, these shoots will, will start to die and uh, certainly are not going to produce good flowers and fruit. Okay? We'll look at a couple other types of printing systems in a little bit. Another training system commonly used 
for apples would be the central leader, and we're talking uh, basically like a Christmas tree. And then another one that would be commonly used for things like pears and pecans would be a modified central leader. Again, we'll look at those a little bit later. So a strong framework. The other thing we want to do is make sure that we've got, that we can maintain this tree that allows us to do maintenance. Okay, so notice we do have a trunk. The limbs start about knee, knee to waist high. That's where these scaffolds come out from. And so the good thing about that, that allows us to come in here, put out fertilizer. We can kind of get around the tree if we need to, to spray, for example, or do other things, uh, we can access the trunk, okay? The other thing that we can do is by having limbs, in this case we have about three scaffold limbs, and after we open this up, that would allow me to come in here and, and prune uh, to, to thin the fruit and pick the fruit, okay? The other thing is we wanna have good air movement so that we can also uh, get drying out the foliage can dry out and we can get good spray coverage in here if we need to, okay? So facilitate maintenance. Um, the other thing I mentioned, we want to make sure we've got good light penetration coming in because we're only going to get fruit, only going to get fruit where we have flowers and we only have flower buds where we have lots of light coming in. Again, for a peach, that's going to be an open center. It's what's going to, what's going to allow that, okay? The last thing I want to talk about is that we are trying to balance crop load, okay? If we zoom in a little more over here, uh, we can get a little closer. We are looking at a one-year-old shoot, and so this, this wood grew last year, okay? So this was green wood, uh, had leaves on it back in 2022. Now in 2023, later, it's going to flower and hopefully make our, our fruit, okay? Most of our fruit crops produce on one-year-old wood. This is growth that occurred during the previous year. And so I can actually look here and see some of these buds are just going to make leaves, but whenever I see like on a peach, plum, or apricot, if I have three buds, uh, one middle bud, two, side, two on the side, at that node, at that position, I know that these are flower buds, okay? So if, if I were to go throughout this tree and count, there would be, there would be probably thousands of flower buds on here. Uh, that's too, many, that's too many peaches, too much fruit, and we don't want this whole tree to, be, to have that much fruit, okay? So what we're gonna do is by removing some of this wood, removing some of the potential crop, um, that's going to, in the winter time when we prune, the tree is gonna respond by growing even more. It's gonna invigorate that tree. So what's gonna happen is that's going to allow for growth, for new vegetative growth, to get that new growth uh, which will become the fruiting wood for 2024, the next year. So it's about making sure that we have some, we leave some fruiting wood to make fruit for this upcoming year, but also we remove enough wood that that encourages enough growth to make fruiting wood for the next year. So it's, it's balancing that crop load and vegetative growth, okay? For a peach tree, that's gonna be about 40% of the tree we're actually going to remove. We typically don't do that much on, on on uh, apples and certainly not on pears, okay? So what we're gonna do is, for the sake of time, I'm going to uh, do a before and after. So before we, uh, before we start pruning, a few things I wanna point out. Uh, we're gonna remove hangers. So uh, I always say this is, uh, the fruit on here would be easy access for a raccoon or possum. Uh, we're gonna remove this. It's also gonna interfere with, with maintenance. These vertical, sprouts coming up here and by the way uh, if you kind of if, if we were to stand back a bit uh, we don't need to right now but if we were to stand back we would see that the new growth on peach tree uh, the the one-year-old wood that is on peach trees that is again what's going to make our fruit that one-year-old wood and it's going to have kind of a red tinge to it so you'll notice in the middle we've got we've got the center that's supposed to be open and it's choked choked out really by these very vigorous vertical sprouts, okay? We call these water sprouts. We don't like them. Uh, they shade out the canopy. They, they just get in the way. And so we're gonna remove these as well. Another thing we're gonna do is we're gonna bring the height of this tree down to about seven feet tall. For me, that's about as high as I can reach. Uh, and then the only thing going above that will be some fruiting wood, okay? Uh, the reason we do that is to keep this, the size of the tree manageable so we can pick from the ground. We don't want to have to get on ladders to pick if we can help it, 
Okay. And then the last thing we're going to do is uh, I mentioned we're going to remove uh, this. We're going to remove uh, wood that's growing in toward the center. Anything that's that's kind of old, uh, that's kind of getting getting in the way, um, we're going to remove as well. Again, we want to primarily just have fruiting wood throughout this canopy. So. Uh, Last thing I want to mention before, before I get on to the pruning is people always ask, what is the best time to prune? Okay? We want to do most of our pruning during the, during the dormant season, okay? right now, the winter time. However, if you can, if you just have a few trees and it doesn't take you weeks to do it, uh, typical peach tree going to take you 30 minutes. You may spend an hour on it, uh, but the best time to prune, if you can, if you can wait, uh, is at the end of the dormant season, uh, late winter, early spring. When you see these buds starting to swell, even if you start seeing some pink, that's the best time. Uh, number one, uh, when, we, when we prune, if we prune real early in the fall, which we don't want to do, that leaves these open wounds sitting there all winter time. It's wet and it's cold. It's easy for these, these wounds to get infected by disease. Whereas if we wait until late winter, uh, the tree is going to wake up right after that and it's going to uh, seal those off. They'll start growing over with callus pretty quickly. Okay? The other reason is just practically, uh, if, 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 you have, if you wait till the buds are pink, starting to show pink color, you don't have to guess. You already know where you're, where, uh, which wood is going to be fruitful. So two practical reasons why we want to wait. Uh, we uh, prune before the leaves start coming out. But again, if we can help it, wait till these start, the buds start to swell just a little bit. All right, let's see what it looks like after I'm done pruning. All right, so now we are looking at the after effects of this open center pruning. Uh, first thing I want to point out is look at how much wood is on the ground. We're going to remove about 40% of the tree every time we do this. Okay, so don't be afraid. Um, again, always prune with a purpose. We talked about the objectives of pruning uh, earlier. But this is, this is how much we're going to remove. So what we're doing here is we've removed potential fruit. We still have lots of fruiting wood in this tree, but we've removed some of the potential crop so this tree can be invigorating into making new growth in 2023. Again, that fruiting wood that, that has grown in 2023 will make 2024's crop. Okay, We've opened up the tree. Notice um, this tree has been opened up. I've lowered the height. I've removed the hangers uh, down here. If there were any suckers, uh, sprouts coming out from the base, I would have removed those. So basically now we have the fruiting zone is from about three feet to about eight feet high. Uh, these upper, upper fruiting shoots, they'll be pulled down by the weight of the fruit. So now we can do everything from the ground. We don't have to use a ladder. I know from experience, not fun uh, falling out of a ladder when you're picking fruit. So uh, one thing, if we can zoom in a little bit over here, get or come a little closer, you notice we do have a little fruiting wood, a uh, little bit of wood left in the center. Some people like to remove this completely. I like to leave just a little bit. Uh, it protects the, the major scaffold limbs in the trunk from sun, sunburn. And as long as it's just small fruiting wood, uh, this will, this will uh, give us a little fruit in the middle of the tree as well. Anything that's really large, again, those water sprouts, uh, I've already removed though, okay? Now again, if it's a very vigorous tree like we have here, um, we will need to come in in June and probably open this up again. Uh, we're looking at a tree over here that is not pruned. This is the definition, if we can get a little bit closer. We've got uh, the epitome of water sprouts right here, okay? So this is a tree that we would have wanted to open up, remove some of these vigorous water sprouts back in June because, uh, because it's really shaded out uh, the canopy below. All right, so let's talk about uh, training systems for a few other types of fruit trees. We're looking at a young apple tree here going into, I believe, about its, its third year. And uh, for apple trees, we're typically at least full-size apple trees, we're going to train them as a central leader. Okay, so. Remember that peach tree we just looked at was open, like an open vase or the top of a martini glass? We have the opposite here. So the leader, that is the trunk, continues to grow up like this, kind of like we'd see with the Christmas tree. And so what we'll have, uh, this has not been pruned yet, but what we'll end up with is we'll have three or four scaffolds 
about two or three feet up. We'll go sell three or four feet up and have another tier of scaffolds. Uh, but again, these are always going to be uh, lower. The tips of these are going to be lower than, than the leader. And so we're maintaining the dominance of this leader. Okay? Uh, apples and pears both want to try to have uh, very vertical growth. So we'll also want to go and put in some limb spreaders, weights, something to keep this at, at a lower angle, not uh, growing straight up like this. So the other thing we would do is, is anything that is really encroaching into the center of this, uh, we would remove it as well. But typically on apple trees, we're not going to take off nearly as much wood as we would on a, on a peach tree. Okay, you can keep filming. Keep it going. Okay. Still going, right? Okay. All right, so now we move from peaches to apples to pears. Pears are going to be grown typically. We train them as a modified central leader. So you can see the trunk going up, and we, it's not an open center. We have lots of growth in the center, but at the same time, uh, this leader, the main leafer, leader kind of bifurcates, bifurcates again into several different... Uh, uh, leaders and so you've got uh, upright growth it's it's not open but again we don't have that single dominant central leader now here's a good example of on a pear tree uh, this is wood that that uh, has got some canker on it and so so of course uh, now would be a good time to remove any kind of dead or diseased wood as well uh, and then again the importance like I talked about of making sure we sterilize our pruning equipment so we're not spreading uh, something like bacterial or fungal canker around, okay? Got a good example of a sucker coming out from the rootstock here that we would remove as well. But on this pair, notice that we've got very tight uh, crotch angles. We've got very upright growth. And so on pear trees, really more so than cutting out, uh, cutting out wood to open up this tree, we're really trying to spread, spread out this tree. So we've got a good example of this over here. You can see how the limb spacers have been removed, but you can see how these branches have been spread out to open up the tree to get more light. That also allows us to get more airflow in, which is going to reduce the incidence of disease. Okay, and of course you can also go to aggie-horticulture.tamu.edu, look at our fruit and nut resources, uh, click on those individual fact sheets on pears, peaches, uh, other stone fruit apples to learn uh, more, get more detail on this. We have other videos also on Aggie Horticulture Facebook. And you can also encourage you to check out our YouTube, our Aggie Horticulture YouTube channel as well. For Texas A&M, AgriLife Extension, Department of Horticultural Sciences, I'm Tim Hartman.